Hello and welcome to the first video in the series, The Joy of Carving. In this video, I'm going to take you through how to carve this Swedish Dala horse. If you've purchased the kit for carving this through my website or through my Etsy shop, a huge thank you for doing so. I really, really appreciate the support. In this video, I'm going to jump straight into the whittling and the carving stages because I want to do a separate video to explain the roughing out phase for beginners. But I just want to say a huge thank you again for watching the video, for supporting the channel and for supporting my small woodworking business as well. So let's begin the joy of carving. One of the great things about whittling is that you don't need very many tools to get started. So I just have my whittling knife, I have the blank cut out of the horse, which is lime or base wood. I then have some sandpaper, which is optional. And then finally my pencil, which is going to be used to just mark out certain areas. There's also an array of detail tools that you could use if you wanted to progress further, but today I'm just going to show you how to use the whittling knife. It's also a good idea to get yourself a nice cutting mat like I have here, but if you don't have one of these you could use some scrap leather or an old newspaper or a magazine, just anything to protect your desk or your best dining table. The first thing that we need to consider before we begin carving is the direction of the wood grain. So you can see quite clearly on this base wood cutout that the flow of the wood grain is going horizontally across and I'm just marking that out there. Now the reason we need to consider the flow of the wood grain is we don't want to go against that flow when we're carving and the reason for that is if we do then what's going to happen is we're essentially going to tear and rip the wood instead of carving it. I think this is one of the fundamental things that um, amateurs and beginner woodworkers, wood carvers um, can find frustrating because it's actually quite difficult sometimes to establish the flow of that grain and understand which way to carve. So I'm marking out the positions uh, of the direction in which I need to carve here, but this is something that just comes with years of experience. I think the best piece of advice that I could give would be as you gain experience wood carving, you will intuitively feel when the wood wants to tear and you'll know instinctively when you're going against the grain. But I'll talk a little bit more about this later. <coughs> Oi, come back, you're not finished. <coughs> okay, let's get started. First things first is the cut that I'm using there is a cut towards myself and it's probably not something that I would recommend as an amateur. What you would want to do is what I'm doing now and use a cut that's going away from yourself and you're resting your thumb on the back of the knife here and just gently pushing away. But over the years, I've just found that the cut that I'm using towards myself there, which I've dubbed the potato peeler, um, it's just a much more comfortable cut for me. But you will notice there that uh, essentially I'm stopping, I'm not using my thumb as a stop, stopping point for the knife there. Um, my, the knife is stopping well before it reaches my thumb. And this isn't a whole arm movement with the cutting, um, this is just a squeeze. So the knife is resting at the tip of my palm and all I'm doing there is squeezing my hand. I'm not pulling my arm in any way, so it's actually a very gentle motion. And just to quickly add as well, there's an array of hand protection gloves, uh, whittling gloves, there's thumb sheaths that you can use in order to protect your hands should you want to use the technique where that I am that you're carving towards yourself. So the first thing that I'm doing here is I'm establishing the thickness of the horse's nose and I'm doing that on both sides. I'm stopping as I go in order to establish symmetry to make sure that it's, it's even on both sides. And I'm always being mindful of the feel of the wood as I carve it. Um, as I said at the start, in terms of the flow and the direction of the wood grain and knowing which direction to carve, you can feel it at this point. If I was carving against the grain, I would really start to feel the wood pull and tear and split instead of actually carving. So now I'm starting to carve the underside or the, the sort of under, under the chin of the horse, if, it, if horses have chins. But yeah, I'm carving the underside of the actual, uh, of the, the mouth. And I'm just establishing the thickness of the neck and just trying to whittle the, the shape of the horse's head, the thickness that I need on both sides there. And I just want to quickly point out here as well that you'll notice that I'm not taking huge chunks of the wood at one time. You really want to resist the urge to do that. It can be really tempting to sort of 
go, okay, I want to, I know I want to remove all this piece, and you know, you're trying to really force the wood, but that's how injuries occur. This is a whittling is a patient process, and you just want to be take your time, take away small pieces of the wood at a time. So you may be wondering why I'm carving the head first. Why aren't I carving the legs or the ears, for example? Well, you can see how I'm holding the carving there. I'm really gripping that wood while I angle the knife and I'm sort of squeezing and I'm maneuvering it. So you want to, when you start carving, whatever it is that you're whittling, you want to start with the thickest part first. You don't want to carve something that's really delicate and really thin like the legs, only to be gripping them and then mid carving, you snap them. Um, it's really frustrating to have to have spent hours on a piece of work and you've carved um, you've carved things in the wrong order and you've ended up snapping something fragile as a result. So at this point now you can see that I'm switching the angle that I'm carving the nose. So if I went down, if I carved the very tip of the nose down like that, because of the direction of the wood grain, I'd actually snap and tear the wood instead of carving it. So I'm just switching the angle for the very tip of the nose there and I'm carving it upwards instead so that I'm still moving with the flow of the wood grain. And that's something that I felt as I was carving. So um, I felt the wood starting to pull and tear. So I knew at that point that I would need to switch the angle. So now we're moving into just shaping the thickness of the body and just rounding the, those edges. Just like we did with the, the head, we're just rounding the edges, we're establishing a thickness and making sure both, both sides have a symmetry. So I thought now would be a good time to explain a little bit further um, the direction and the flow of the wood grain. So if you take your hand and you lay it flat on the table and imagine that your fingers are pointing in the direction of the wood grain. So your fingers are the wood grain. And they're pointing in the direction that they're flowing. If you took your other hand and you placed it in front and you start pulling it towards your fingers, then your fingers are going to lift up then they're going to snap back and they're going to flick on the table. That in essence is what happens when we're going against the wood grain. And we need to make sure that we're always flowing with the grain. It's where the phrase going against the grain comes from. Okay, so the neck here, the back of the neck, it's a really interesting angle because although the direction of the wood is all flowing in the same way, because we've established a dip, we've established a hill essentially, um, it's going to change how we're carving. Now the simplest way to understand this is you always want to carve downhill, never carve uphill. Um, so if you imagine the where that neck and that mane meets the back, we've essentially carved a valley, we've carved a V-shape, and you always want to make sure that you're carving down into that valley. You don't want to carve up. As soon as you start, start carving up, you're lifting the wood grain instead of carving, so you're going to split the wood. So you can see there that point being reinforced, so I'm carving down the hill, I'm carving, I've created a rounded area with the rear of the horse, the horse's bum bum, um, but I'm carving down the hill. here that I'm no longer carving down the leg, I'm carving upwards. And why is that? And 
the reason is that if we continue to carve down the leg towards the hoof, towards the feet of the horse, the base, uh, what would happen is we'd actually end up splintering and tearing off chunks of the wood. So remember that the, the flow of the grain here is going horizontally across across the horse. So it's stacked, it's stacked in layers. Uh, if you continue to carve down towards those layers, when you get to the last layer, what's going to happen is that last layer is going to snap off, it's going to pull away. So that runs the risk of tearing off a chunk of the work. So that's why the very, very base of the horse's hooves there, you need to carve upwards. And now you can continue to carve down, but you can see there that I'm stopping before I get to those hooves to ensure I don't tear off any chunks. This is just another good point to make as well about uh, carving direction, carving with and against the grain. When I was carving those legs, I was technically carving across the grain. Now carving across the grain, that's absolutely fine to do as long as your knife is sharp enough. Um, carving across the grain is something that you can do, it's a fundamental. Uh, the only thing that you do need to consider that you need to be really mindful of is that you stop before you get to the very end of the carving. So just for example, when I was carving those legs and the hooves, obviously I was carving down the leg and when I got to the hooves I stopped. So, and then I changed direction of the carving. So that's what you would need to consider. Now what I'm doing is I'm starting to put in the jawline of the horse, that sort of the horse's jawline where it meets the neck. And I'm making what's called a stop cut here. So if you look at the angle that I'm pointing the knife in, I'm carving it into a V shape. So I'm pressing gently on one angle and then switching it onto the other side and pressing again. And that's what's known as a, a stop cut. And it's essentially a valley, we're just carving a groove in order to define that shape. And I'm using that stop cut technique again there to carve the belly uh, and the legs of the, of, the, of the horse. So essentially that stop cut, all that is, is it's a cut that prevents us carving past that point. So we're pressing the knife down into an area and then we're carving against it. So the knife has something to butt against. So the stop cut prevents the knife from moving past beyond the area we don't want to carve. So I'm using the same technique as earlier to carve the front leg, so just carving upwards at the hoofs and then switching and carving down, making sure you know, we stop before we meet the feet. to clean up that area where the gap is I'm just moving the knife across the grain there uh, just carefully between each of those legs we don't want to apply too much force here you, if you can apply too much force then you run the risk of snapping the leg off so just be careful and be mindful when you're carving the area between the legs And all I'm doing now is I'm just marking out the area where I want the ears to be, just making sure that they're symmetrical and everything's in line with the rest of the body as well. And we're going to be using the same technique that we used to carve the jawline, so that stop cut, that valley that we're carving, the V-shape. But the trick here is, again, as with all of the techniques that we've been using, you don't want to apply too much force, do a little piece at a time because you'll run the risk of snapping off a chunk of the ear. So yeah, just be very, very careful here. Just moving the knife.
knife across the grain just to carve the space between the ears there. And that's the finished Swedish Dala horse. Now you can take yours a step further. You could carve it uh, with the detail tools and refine the shape more if you're more confident carving. You can sand it a little bit, which is what I've done here, just a few areas here and there, but not too much because I like to retain that whittled shape. But I hope this video has been very, very useful for you. P please feel free to email me on my website, on the Etsy shop, or contact me on Instagram if you have any questions. But thank you so much for supporting my small woodworking business. And I hope this has been really useful for you. Thank you.